The book, The Great Leveler, discusses the inevitability of violence in the cycle of civilization. It gets into the gory details, but as academics are wont to do, it can obscure the bigger picture. Here is the cycle of civilization. Roving gangs force individual able-bodied men to sacrifice their flesh, blood, and bone in an aristocratic militia defending their common territory. So-called property rights emerge. The aristocracy protects these properties in exchange for payment best characterized as property insurance premiums. This nascent civilization is sustainable because its foundation in the flesh, blood, and bone of the able-bodied man is nourished by the so-called economy. However, as the civilization's wealth grows, the aristocracy seeks to unburden itself of both the need to pay its own premiums and to sacrifice their own flesh, blood, and bone. This it does by shifting from property insurance premiums to taxes on economic activity and using the tax revenue to pay young men, so taxed, to do the sacrificing as soldiers. Religious leaders are then in a position to offer the corrupt aristocracy a de facto income stream by indoctrinating soldiers of a so-called moral duty to sacrifice their flesh, blood, and bone to the aristocracy. Thus, a deadly embrace forms between a corrupt secular and a corrupt religious magisteria. This deadly embrace corrupts all other institutions, such as media and academia. The young men upon whose flesh, blood, and bone civilization is truly founded are so handicapped in acquiring property to provide the, a homestead that they can no longer outbid the economy for the fertile years of young women. The great leveler then tears down civilization until young men are once again able to outbid the economy for the fertile years of young women. No, 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 no.